So this theme between mother God and father God, as I've been thinking about, you know, God is love, right? I, I consider that a statement of truth. And there's oneness within God. There's oneness within all creation. And yet there's distinctions between different energies and aspects of how things show up. And I've learned that the law of gender is a universal law of creation. It's a principle that exists all throughout. From the oneness of God essence that created all that is, all through creation. And my understanding of it, the simplest understanding I've come to, is that the feminine principle represents receptivity. So there's a receptive energy that's involved. And in the masculine principle, represents an active energy. So more active, almost like something going out and something coming back in. And there's this flow that always happens. And so there are these different expressions of this oneness of love that we call God that shows up in these different ways. So I did a little research. I'm going to bring a uh, little history lesson here on Father God. And we're all aware that Jesus used the word Father to relate to his connection with God. And most of our history is patriarchal, so it kind of makes sense. A lot of things revolve around a focus of male perspective. But Jesus used the word Abba, which is the Hebrew word for Father. And he didn't relate to God as just his Father. But as found in the Lord's Prayer, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So we had a personal relationship with Father as God, but also recognized that God is the Father of all, all that is. And it didn't start there with the Jesus, with this idea. In fact, even in the Old Testament, there's references, such as Isaiah 64.8, that says, Yet you, Lord, are our Father. We are the clay, you are the potter. We are the work of your hand. Which gives us very active energy, right? Like you are molding and shaping creation and we are yours. So I started looking around and this father phenomenon of relating to God has been all throughout the world, all throughout history and culture. So I have some examples. In Hinduism, Lord Brahma is considered the father of all beings and the creator of the universe. He's depicted with four heads representing knowledge from all directions. In Buddhism, Mahakala is worshipped as a father figure who protects against negativity and obstacles. He's often depicted with multiple arms holding weapons to ward off evil spirits. Japanese culture has its own father god called Izanagi no Makoto, who created Jap Japan alongside with his female partner, Izanami no Mikoto. Chinese mythology also features several father gods like Shangdi or Emperor Tian, who govern, govern over heaven and earth. They're depicted wearing dragon robes, holding supreme power over creation. In Celtic mythology, found throughout Ireland and Scotland, Dagda is revered as an important father god who represents abundance and fertility. One of the most notable divine father figures in Native American culture is Manitou, who's believed to be the creator of all things. The Native Americans also refer to Father Sky as a sky god, and in relationship, Mother Earth as the counterpart for that balance. Viking Norse mythology refers to Odin as the All Father, the father of all gods, known for wisdom, war tactics, and poetry. In Greek mythology, there's Zeus, who was the father of the gods. But even before him, there was a father that fathered him named Kronos, the creator of the cosmos. 
In African mythology, there's Shango and Ogun from Yonubi religion that represent thunder and iron, respectively. Then there's the Egyptian god Ra, who's considered the divine father figure of creation, and the Aztecs worship Tunatu as their sun god and father of spirituality. The point is, all beings have relationship to God, and there's a father-mother aspect of regardless of what name we give it or how we relate to it, we can have a personal relationship. It's everywhere, especially inside of us.